What's going on, you guys? Another episode of Game Time. We give you practical, we give you practical business solutions that you can use and implement today. We get a lot of frequently asked questions for entrepreneurs, and we've been in the industry for a while. We like to just share what we know and hopefully help everyone to be successful. Uh, who do we have with us? TS with TS Design Studio. He looked at the right camera this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. So no further delay. We're gonna get into it. And the topic we have today is hiring a professional so a lot of times when it comes to hiring a professional um you see a lot of ads you see people that say i could do your website i could do your logo i could do your t-shirt and in the regular world is bigger better business bureau right you have that you got credit like your credit score if you're going to get a car but in this realm everything looked like too good to be true so how do you hire a professional to help you on the creative side? All right, first things first uh, in the space, say for example, your business is going, you first, whenever, for example, if you're ready to step into the marketing and you need to get some branding identity done, such as your logo, some graphics, uh, maybe a website, uh, I would say outline first what you need and don't let me see how i can put this always go for what you need first now how do you if put your mic up some too put your mic up all the way up 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 up, up. keep going keep right going there. keep going yeah right there perfect right, yep that's perfect that's right, perfect cool so you said always say it again what you said always find out what you need first okay right. so before you answer that okay how does a person know what they need because most time when they get in they like I need all of this stuff, but in reality, how do they know what they need? Yeah, and that's a very, very good question. So let's, let's start here. So first, analyze your competition. Because when mm. you get into that space, you know who your competition is. At least you should. You so should. First things first, find out who your competition is. Right. All right? Analyze and kind of see what they're doing. If they're doing TV commercials, if they're on social media, if they're getting a lot of buzz, uh, probably – Start there. Now, you want to ask questions because a lot of times people jump in because their competition has this big, elaborate website. They say, oh, I need to get a big, elaborate website. Well, before you do that, consult with uh, a lot of people call them strategists now. Um, but I always tell people to try to consult with the person in that field, somebody who's really qualified. Now, a lot of times they'll do a free consultation with you. And sometimes it's a cost. So you have to pick and choose if this person is worth paying the cost for a consultation. At least you're getting the information. All right, let's, let's do this. Let's do with different industries. That way people can kind of see what they're talking about. Yeah. So let's say church. If we say church, ain't no competition over here. We all for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so they ain't going to say competition. So let's use for a church example. Should they look at churches similar to their size or bigger? For the church example, what should their first thing be? Well, I think you hit on those. Look at churches that are similar to their size. Because okay. at the end of the day, if I choose to go to a, a mega church, that means uh, I don't mind being, you know, at a church with a large audience. So if somebody's at mega church status and they're looking to elevate, they're not doing, remember we talked about in the last episode, mm. they're not looking to elevate and have the accommodations that I need. I might look at another church. Because remember, if you don't have a member that's dedicated to you for at least over five or 10 years, a lot of times, and I know I hate to say this, but they might church jump, you know, mm -hmm. just for accommodations. Mm -hmm. Or this church is hyper than this mm -hmm. church, or I'm feeling this church a little bit better. Cause you gotta think when you get a, even when you get a new member, they're still trying to get adjusted. They still trying to get a feel. And so the leadership has to uh, pick and choose what is important. So like I was, was saying in the last episode, let's, let's start with the media. I mean, you mm -hmm. see a lot of people getting those big screens. Uh, they're doing a lot more digital advertising. And if you mm -hmm. notice, even on Sundays, they have actual commercials of the announcements. So, so if you're a storefront church, or like you in a hotel or you're somewhere smaller and you have bigger aspirations and somebody comes to you and says, I can get you to that, right? Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of folks are in that boat, right? They're just starting off, they don't have nothing. And we are talking about how they should hire a professional. Yes. So we talking about storefront churches, 
Should they look at other storefront or other hotel churches, or who should they look at to kind of They gauge? should look at who they're aspiring to be. Uh, even if it's way up here. Yeah, even if it's way up, because that's your goal. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so most churches, the first thing they're going to start off with is the music department. First thing, get referrals. Mm, yeah, referrals get from who? All right, so if you're in the, in the church, you know who the top players are in, in the music. Say, you music. should, you should. You know, there's no way that you're starting a church and you don't know. Even if that, that musician is working for another church, I'm not saying try to solicit them. But we say, ain't stealing. Hey, mm. Do you know anybody else that's probably coming up mm. that's good because we're starting a new ministry and we need some hot talent? You know, mm. and like I said, um, most of the time that person is going to give you a, re- uh, a good referral because it's, it's his reputation that's on the line. And mm. he'll probably call that musician a... I got something for you. Hey, this is a pastor I love and respect. Make sure when you do the interview and stuff, make sure it's on par. Now, okay. when they come in, say you, you hire for the music department, you get their referrals, and get to know them. Mm-hmm. See, find out. Just because they play good, they probably make sure they love Jesus. Cause oh, yeah, you got to know their <laughs> reputation. Make sure yeah. they're comfortable being in church because sometimes they'll just go through the motions. And make sure... It's some dedication to ask them how long they've been playing. Mm. Did they grow up in the church? Ask them some some questions about loyalty. Do they have a family? You know, even if it's a young person, you know, is this something that you plan on doing Mm -hmm. uh, as a career? So here's a question. Do you do old school, like, references? Like, you know, we talking about hiring professionals. Do we ask for three references, resume, portfolio, SoundCloud, with this example how far do you investigate to see if it's credible? Yeah, referrals is is key. I would recommend that you actually follow up on those referrals you get. You can ask the young man or the young lady, whoever you're interviewing, hey, who have you worked for in the past? And make sure they give you a creditable referral. So that matters. Okay, so do the research yeah, on that. Yeah, so, because that way when you call that credible referral, that referral, a lot of times, his re- like I said, uh, I'm a graphic designer, so mm-hmm. I got some high level clients. So mm-hmm. when I give that referral, they call it a high level referral. Mm. That high level referral cares about their reputation. You okay, see what I'm saying? Sure. So they're not gonna say if I if I screwed up and stuff like that. If I suck, they're gonna pretty much be like, "Hey, I like TS and all, but you know." I don't know if he's the right person for what for y'all you, got going for on. For what y'all got going on, so he's let's do good, this. but his expertise is probably not for the level you're looking for. So let's jump industry. So that was church. What's another industry that you see a lot of people getting into starting out that we can use as an example? So that was church. What's another industry a lot of people hit you up in? All right. So the biggest struggle that I see is uh, an entrepreneur. Going out on their own. What industry, though? Like, what are they doing? Okay, so I'll give you an uh, industry. Let me give you a good industry. Let's do a universal one. Let's say hair care. Hair care. So that's stylists. So that could be stylists. Barbers. Barbers all of these people. Okay. Yeah. And I, the reason why I'm going to that, because that's how I kind of got my... It was entertainment, and then it was in the beauty industry. But the beauty industry is really that took me to some levels, because I was introduced to people in so many other industries through the beauty industry. Okay. But what I noticed is, uh, in the beginning, <laughs> I used to go to the barbershops and like I can do business cards for y'all. And I was just starting, so I was just desperate for work. So I really didn't have a high-end portfolio. So it was just a bunch of people. The only thing they really cared about was cost. Right. So I was, do your work, you know, for the best fee. You know, mm-hmm. they wasn't looking for expertise. They wasn't asking for referrals. You assure them what you did. They and that was a, it. They put an order in. Did you give me your MySpace page? I, I, mean, I had Black Planet. <laughs> I had no. Back then, I had a site even before MySpace, so it's just a regular HTML, moving on Flash mm, websites. Mm, mm, so people mm, thought mm, they were cool. Mm. Um, and so it wasn't until I started working, uh, my wife's cousin, who's uh, Larry Roberts, um, oh the Barber's with, College with Larry's Barber College, that he kind of really boost my name in the industry because I actually laid out his uh, barber school that's on 104th in Halstead. Mm-hmm. So I started doing all his identity branding and all that. So I actually had a legitimate 
so you, referral now. So you, and then, so you can show them. Yeah, and then I worked with uh, Dewana Hammond, who everybody called the madam back then because she had so many stylists. And so they kind of helped me too. So I actually, now I got some references and stuff like that. But going back to the topic is what they would do. And I saw uh, some stylists who had some high-end clients. They were like, you know, who did you work for? You know, mm -hmm. and they would call that person because they all kind of knew each other. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as you start getting better, your price points start or they should start going up a little bit. Because if you cheap, mm -hmm. even if you mess up, they like uh, it only cost me a couple of dollars. Yeah. But when so you saying so you saying credit checks, what I hear you saying is that vouching for people, reputation. So when you hire a professional. Um, you qualify them by their references. Yeah. So if there's somebody on um, on Instagram or social media with a nice portfolio, it's nice, they got stuff. If I want to reach out to that person in 2024, that's how they doing. Yeah. Should I reach out to that person? They got the glitz and glamour and nobody I knows know this person. Should I do that or yeah. just go with yeah. the person? Yes, you, you definitely can. But then when you're talking to that person, because they're going to respond back to you, because I reached out to people that way. But mm -hmm. then I always ask them, who else have you done work for? Is it somebody that I can call? Because I like to call your reference. Because they'll be like, oh, I did this for such and such, or I did this for such and such. You can just go to my page and see the work I did for them. Well, I don't know if you actually did that work. Because you know, it ain't like it's nationwide and it's all on TV and it's being advertised. I want to call that person. I want to see... Did he actually like working with you? Because you can produce a great product, but you can be hell to work with. Oh, man, you ain't got to tell me. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? So I always say when I reach out to people to do work for me, I always be like, yeah, I want to talk to somebody physical that mm -hmm. you actually work with. It's cool. I see the work. You, There's no doubt you got skills, but I want to know if you showed up on time. I want to know if you met deadlines. You mm -hmm. know, I want to know if you was respectful, responsible. Because I want you know, if I send you to talk to a client, I want to make sure you know how to talk to them. And, and all of that never goes anywhere. And this is the same stuff you hear when they're in middle school, high school, yep. college. These are like basic skills that people check for. They check for, uh, there's a book I read called uh, Make Your Contacts Count. People are always checking for character and competence. Who you are and the skill set and how you move around. And you, you just said that. And what do you feel about uh, subcontractors? Because I've seen where people will have a website and it's all this great stuff. And the person who shot it or who did the work is not necessarily who's going to do your work. What do you think about those type of businesses? Now, this, now this is why I can get pretty detailed with the client. So what you this this is your steps. You have to ask those questions. So for example, you get the web. We start with web design, right? You want a website. You got a budget for it, uh, and so you uh, you would say, all right. This is the key question. Is this your full-time thing? Mm, that matters. Oh, yes. Because if you got a nine-to-five, that's your priority. Mm. And you got a business, that business is everything to you. Mm. So here you are. Everything is in your business, but you're getting, you you hiring a person that only can give you limited time. You're so, not a priority. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pump the brakes. So are you doing discrimination TS for people who trying to make it, man? It all depends on the <laughs> It all depends if you're willing to take that chance. I give you an example. Mm -hmm. You working with a guy who's working on your website and you got a deadline for that website. Okay. I get some people who have deadlines. You know, they this is the day I gotta start selling the actual my brick and mortar open this day. I need my online store. We've been pushing out marketing for the last two months. Mm -hmm. We we gave a launch date. If I don't make this launch date, I start to lose money. But then mm -hmm. you're working with a web designer who may be good, but if his job calls him, mm -hmm. because you're probably that one side job, but he relies on that job. Oh, and that job might put him okay. on an assignment. Oh. So now he's delayed. It's only so many time, so much time in a day. So if his job is mm -hmm. occupying who probably was only occupying eight, now it's taking 12. When does he have time for you? And you got a website, especially if it's... Oh, there we go. You must be at 15. Yep, 15 minutes. Okay, keep with me. Say it again. Hold on. I, I keep telling me about the Sony, but Sony don't do that. Hold on. That was good. 
Okay. So you were saying that to recap that point, you were saying that if a person if you're looking at a professional hire one, the key question that you just said is that if this is their full time job, that means that's a major point because they'll give it all your attention. You said a person where this is their part time and this and that, their job is their thing and if they can get pulled away, and that's a big thing that you look at when you're trying to so if you hire to hire somebody because most people especially because websites are not inexpensive a good one mm -hmm. and it's going to require some time some back and forth and most business owners require uh a lot of time into their stuff at least they want to feel like they're a priority mm -hmm. and they want to be able to call you when they need to what if you at work i can't get mm -hmm. you doing the day well that's when i'm working so that's that's okay. So what I'm hearing you say, that's like a luxury premium, almost like white glove. The yeah. fact that you pay all this money, but what you get in this is access to a person, comfort, answering the phone because you're my priority. Whereas opposed, the other one you were saying is you can get this person for here, but you might not be able to reach them. You're thinking of the priority. So those are the two things you got to consider. Am I getting you right? Yep. And okay. I, I give you an example. Uh, are you familiar with Michelle with Michelle Foods? Yes. She would always say, bosses talk to bosses. Mm. So if I'm saying I'm the boss of my company and I'm talking to another boss, you see what I'm saying? Mm. I got to make sure I give them that respect. Mm. Even if I have somebody else working on a project, a lot of times I do, but I make sure if, if I'm talking to the owner of the company or the president, he's going to get me on the phone. Right. He's not going to get my employee Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I need to make him feel. Hey, you owe us $20. His phone went off again. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. <laughs> I, I want to make them feel like the superior that they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And here I am. I'm juggling, and I got to go to my 9 to 5. And two, a lot of times with a person who has a 9 to 5, he's not giving them much attention and care because he has a backup. Right. Now, if he's the owner of that company, his reputation is on the line. That if he one, cares about it. If he cares, if he cares about it. And that's mm -hmm. how you grow in a service business. Mm -hmm. Every client counts because you know, like I know, mm -hmm. bad news travel way faster. Than good news. Than good news. Now I wanna add, okay, so we just talked about that. I want to add another question that we came up with. Um was talking about Fiverr, Wix, and overseas people. And someone of test told me, Oh, I can just go on Fiverr. $10, they'll knock all these out. $15, knock all this out. $25, $100. You out your mind. I can go on this marketplace. They got all these reviews. They got five stars. You tripping TS. I can just go with them. What do you say about Wix and Fiverr and all that? What's your thoughts on those? I, 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 I get this question asked all the time. Mm -hmm. And what I found out is you can shop on the rack or you can be custom. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I just know people that's on a certain level. They like a certain fine touch. Mm. For example, when you go to Fiverr, you're still hiring a designer. They're just they're just broken out a bunch of cheap people who can do something fast, quick, and cheap. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And hope, and they throw you up, throw you a net. Hope that you like something. It's a hope. Mm -hmm. Why is people who want to thrive has a specific area that they want to accomplish? Those who want to dominate in their field, they go for a specialist. Mm. They want more reassurances. So they gonna look out for the best. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? You don't never heard nobody in the NBA get the cheapest player. They're bidding mm. for the most expensive player. So I got a question. So do you see people on Fiverr and Wix these places? Uh, what's your resume? Who you work for? Do, is it that level on there? Or can you, you, you know, just I tried a, a, a while ago. It's, it's not really that. It's, it's that I think Five and Wick, it stops with the person you're communicating with online. Mm -hmm. And you're probably chatting. And if you do get somebody, you're not talking. You can't actually. They do put you in contact with a designer. But then I find out a lot of them are overseas, mm -hmm. which is a language barrier, which mm -hmm. really distracts people. Because I know even if you charge in a few hundred dollars, it's still a few hundred dollars. And I can't even understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's cultural differences. Mm -hmm. You know your audience. Say your audience is African American, mm -hmm. but then you got this Indian or someone in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. trying to design for your culture, mm-hmm. it becomes kind of hard. Now, for some people who don't care, they just need something just to meet some type of qualification. But you can tell, though. You can tell. You can tell the difference. And, and those people are really not clients for me. So I always tell the client, if you just need something fast, quick, and it really don't matter to you, mm-hmm. you really don't care, you just need something, they're yeah, fine. Fiverr is great for you. Wix. Uh, and I like to say, because even with Wix, you got to hire a designer that got levels. Mm. A lot of a lot of times people get confused with a template and a mm. platform. Oh, okay. So a template okay. is something that's pre-done. Mm-hmm. So that can be on WordPress, Wix, Webform, uh, Squarespace, all those different platforms. You can buy a template to just integrate into a platform. And so a lot of people would think that, oh, don't put me on WordPress. Oh, don't, I don't want to use Wick. I'm like, first thing I ask him, did you use a template? Mm. Cheap route. Mm. Other thing I asked him, did you use a qualified designer? Because you mm. ever notice, even when we was working on your site, mm-hmm. it's easy even when you want to upgrade because you can mm-hmm. probably get probably a medium like designer, mm-hmm. but at least he followed the steps. So if when you're ready to up, you already, you was already put on a good platform. You're coding the setup that you can pass it on to, to any other design. And if something messes up, I and if think, something messes up, like a template, yeah. oh it could God, be somebody I've in another that. country who did the template. I've seen that. When and it it's all up, jacked up, mm. and then it probably some spam in it, and then yeah. you give it to a qualified designer. They're like, oh, this is crap. You got to start all over. Yeah, start like, what do you mean? Over. I paid X, Y, Z. You went about it the wrong way. You didn't ask the questions. That you needed to ask. But I think people don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So they see the pricing and they're picking this stuff based on pricing, but they're not considering like this conversation we have now. Yeah. This happens when you have a person that you're spending money with. Yeah. They'll walk you through the good, the bad, the up, the down, the left, the right. They're yeah. thinking ahead and offering a quality wraparound. Whereas if you go over there, you taking the risk, you doing stuff and it might work. But as you grow, it's hard to scale that because it's like a like piecemealed out. Yeah. So the other question I had, another elephant in the room, is Canva. Is it Canva? Yeah. Canva. We're going to talk about Canva because people have said Canva has made it user-friendly. I got landing pay. I got this, that. What's your thoughts on Canva for these uh, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs who say, I could just do it on my own? What's your thoughts on that? All right. Keep in mind. They had those type of sites for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. There's been template graphics out there that you can just download and do. They were publisher. Canva is just an online version of publisher. Publisher. You it's all it about the creativity, the person who's coming up with the design. That's what people ask me all the time. Are you afraid of Canva? This, that, and the other. I'm like, no. People mm-hmm. hire me for my creativity. That's up here. Mm-hmm. I, the pro software is just a tool that I use. I, I tell people all the time, I used to use a pen and a paper. To mm-hmm. illustrate, mm-hmm. then the, then they just digitize it. Now I got a pen and a pad. Now I'm putting mm-hmm. my creativity that way. You, mm-hmm. That's what you're calling me for. My ideas, mm-hmm. my creativity, the way I strategize. Mm-hmm. That's the value. Mm-hmm. I'm understanding your audience, and I'm creating a piece to make it work. I'm saying, hey, this is too much content. This nobody's gonna read that. I made that look good, so it gets people attention. It's not the software. That's going to replace me. It's mm. me not coming up with great ideas. So always remember that when you're hiring, you're hiring somebody for their skills. Just like with a mm. doctor. He can have a robot in the room, but you're you're there for his expertise, his knowledge. If anything goes wrong, he knows how to fix it. And you know what? When it comes, you say, doctor, man, I can see somebody. In that frame of reference, people get it. Like, you want the doctor to take your insurance or the $8 doctor? <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be so funny... People will spend on construction and hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They would get all the licensing mm-hmm. they need. They would get all the education they need. And all of a sudden, to actually get a ROI, a return on your investment, a lot of times you need marketing. And they have mm-hmm. no budget for that. And the first thing they say is, I don't know. I'm like, what's your budget? I don't know. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, oh, that's weird. But I say, but you knew your construction budget. You knew how much your school was going to cost to get your licensing or whatever mm-hmm. qualification you need to pursue whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. But here it is, the ROI to potentially make you one of the most successful people in the world, mm-hmm. and you don't have a clue. 
You know what? And I think that's a good point because going into it, I don't think anybody knows the value of marketing budgets. So when you look at billboards, radio advertisements, social media, and people don't reveal it and they don't even realize how much is going on behind the scenes to keep those brands forefront. Like, I'll give you an example. You might know this more than me, like McDonald's. How long McDonald's been around? Oh, man, I mean, since the 50s or 60s. Okay, so they're, they're a franchise, right? So they're everywhere, but you can hear them on the radio. You can see them on billboards. You see them on social media, and this is an established company. This ain't new. So if an established company is doing it, why does a new company feel like they shouldn't have to? One of the things I found out, and this is just through my observation, and I, I want to get your take on this too, is whenever you see a successful person representing that company or a successful entrepreneur, they never really expand on the value of advertising. Mm -hmm. They talk about marketing, but marketing is very, very vague. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's an umbrella to advertising, PR, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and, and sales. They are just give a broad spectrum, but nobody mm -hmm. say, hey, we did this campaign and over this period of time, we start seeing results. You usually got a person that's part of that conference or has to ask that CEO that specific question. Right. But it's never part of their general presentation of importance of advertising. And a lot of people are not even saying advertising is dead. And I always say, no, we just do a different form of advertising because we're always For selling, sure. even in a story. Because a lot of people mm -hmm. hate to say advertising is in people's stories. Mm -hmm. No, but you're still selling something. You are an experience, a memory, the experience, yeah. product placement. You're still selling something. Even in your sympathy stories mm -hmm. and the whole nine, you just shifted from me showing you the specification and how it works to let me put a story behind it. And if you look, too, on social media, I agree with that. Um, they're not showing that. Two parts I want to say. One is... These companies too, they advertise to different markets. So I know I remember with uh, McDonald's, they used to always do that Martin Luther King commercial. Yeah. If we could light a candle, all that stuff. <laughs> so they had that. That was like the thing. And then um, they do stuff when there's different festivals to go with this and that. So the time of year they put, you know, black actors, white actors, Latino. You can tell they're trying to reach somebody specific because you think about a restaurant, it's like McDonald's. Who's target market? Everybody eats. No, let's let's go in a little bit. Yeah, they're right. trying to reach certain people. So if you just study it, but then their budgets are probably off the chain. So when you look at a company that's starting out, they're looking at, you know, if you just look, I don't even, that'd be a good statistic. How many commercials are you exposed to in a day? What do you think? I mean, I don't know the answer, but if you I think about that. I know you advertised to so many seconds a day. It got to be hours. It's so many seconds. So if you count, I forget the exact numbers, between three to seven seconds. As you walk in, you, whether it be a street sign, billboard, uh, some type of flyer, some type of poster, uh, on your phone, because mm -hmm. people are glued in on their phones. Now they got sh digital screens everywhere. When you go in a grocery store, especially when you go into a grocery store. In the Ubers. In the Ubers. It's just, you're being advertised between three to seven seconds. So knowing that, knowing that with this topic we said, and we agreeing it is necessary, you definitely need to talk to a professional because you, you, the thing is, you have to spend money to get your name out there, right? Yep. That's a given. So if I have to spend money in advertising before I just start doing stuff, because like you said, they don't have a budget, how do they know it's too much or it's not enough? So the first step, I think, out of all of this kind of full circle, is tap a professional and have that one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Because on your own, you know you have to do it, but if you don't have the wherewithal, you'll, you'll be failing before you even start. What do you think about that? What I've noticed is a lot of businesses – and I know you, as a professional photographer like you, first thing you would probably tell them, like, okay, who are these pictures for? Who, who, who are you trying to mm -hmm. capture? Mm -hmm. Who's your audience? First thing they'll say, oh, we're trying to tackle everybody. Everybody. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. you cannot tackle everybody at one time. You flow, you flowing today. Okay. <laughs> so you said you can't 
You said you can't target you, everybody. You cannot target everybody. I know you want Latinas. I know you want whites. I know you want the Indians. I know you even want us. But pick a lane to start. But ain't that, people will say, ain't that limiting yourself? It's another side of it. Like, if you want me to narrow myself and say, hey, I just want 15, 18 year old young men for my product. Is that discrimination? Is that limiting? I'm just saying for both sides of the conversation. That actually, that's, that. actually, that's a great, that's a, actually great to do because mm. you're actually pinpointing a great target. Now your advertising is boom, zeroed in just on that audience, period. And social media does that when you do yes. stuff. Don't they ask you that? Yeah. So if you could do it by like age, you can't do it by like race and stuff anymore, but mm -hmm. you could do zip codes. Like you can't do 50 states because that's what they say. It's a difference between a local campaign and a mm. nationwide. And a, you got a tri-state campaign. Then you got a nationwide campaign. That's when you get the large markets. Mm. Um, it's budgets that come with that. So even with big companies, there's rules. Like if Coca-Cola wants to advertise to African-Americans, there's rules and stuff they got to follow mm -hmm. in order to do that. Now, if you're a small company and you want to do a big campaign, most of you who want to get everybody, but most of you don't know the Latina culture and what makes them move. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Most people, you know, we're African American, we're black, but we don't know how to really advertise to the white community. That's why the white community, when they advertise to us, they hire us. Mm -hmm. we, they're going to hire a black firm or uh, have us consult them through the, their big communication firm. But they're right, not going right. to try to just do it on their own. They're going to mm -hmm. like, okay, we have this particular idea that we, that we have. Oh, let's get some brothers or some sisters in here. Let's ask them some questions and see if it works. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they get it mm -hmm. so, so, so wrong. But mm -hmm. to ta try to go in, especially as a small business, for one, you don't have the budget for it. Mm -hmm. Because when you adver advertising to different ethnicities, you have to target them. You have you to have it's to a cultural it. thing. Yeah. If you notice, and like when we used to watch Soul Soul Train for many, many years. Oh God. <laughs> that's a great example. Even now when the Essence Awards and stuff and the image awards and stuff coming on, those advertising is strictly for us. Because that's the demographic that's we watching. We start seeing the thing. our face. Yeah. You start seeing us and it moves us. You see what I'm saying? Could you imagine after our shows and our productions mm -hmm. and we're just seeing a lot of whites and Hispanics, you'd be like this. Hey, why am I watching this show and I'm yeah. not seeing us? Yeah, and I feel like... And it's not going it's not gonna hit you. And so if you're a small business, you know what I'm saying, especially in, in the community, your ass should be, for one, if you ain't got your local community, how you going to get everybody else? So everything you're saying is just, is really credible to why your first step should be talk to a professional. Yeah. Because there's so much stuff, Cause I think the person should just focus in on their business, whatever it is they do, right? Mm -hmm. And their thing is, I want to grow. And talking with you, you can say goals, talk them through the goal, talk them through the technical, give them practical advice on where to start, you know, where to, because mm -hmm. they, they can't just do what they could do on their own. They can just do stuff, put it like yeah. that. They can do a website, do a logo, film a commercial. They can do all of the stuff that you do, but they're paying for the advice, the return on investment, uh, realistic feedback, so they can save time. Because if they don't call a professional, I guess that's really what we're saying. If you don't call a professional on the front end, they can't help you navigate this. So the professional you're talking about sounds like a strategist or a firm. What is that? Who would they call initially? Yeah, so... Cause we're not calling the web yeah. designer the the photographer first. We're calling the what? What would that be called? Yeah. So now they're they they out there. They're more prevalent. So even if you go on LinkedIn or something, you can look for a brand strategist. Brand and strategist. And they will from there can help assist, give start to build identity. Is that you? You a brand strategist? Yeah. So okay, that's one of your hats. That's one of my hats. Okay. We can give your business and start to put together an identity, because mm -hmm. we take in a bunch of information. Because some, for example, some people want to attract young people, say for ages twenty one to thirty four. Okay. And after you sit down and ask them a bunch of questions, 
about where they're going, what their service is, who are they currently serving, we find out, man, your audience is 40 to 55. Mm. Now, we understand that you want, that you probably think it's cool and that's where you see your business, but the way you're operating, you're targeting this group. So we think your advertising and promotion should be this. So this is how your photography should go. This is how your website should go. This is why whatever we decide to advertise, this is how it should go because this is the market. Now, mm -hmm. if you if you depth on that 21 or 34, now we got to educate you on how the 21 and 34 are typically advertised to. You need a course, man. You just probably you see what I'm saying? Because yeah. there's so many pieces and one lead to another, to another, to another. Yeah, because... And if somebody wants to watch your content, they can kind of see how to target, how it is. And one thing I got before you finish was, do you do brand evaluation? Like if somebody said, Tia's evaluate my brand. I think I'm this. Can you evaluate? Do you do that for people? It can take time, and that can get expensive if I don't technically know you or it's not already known to people. Because remember, brand is the reputation. It's how people see you. Mm. And a lot of people are in denial about <laughs> That's why man. I say evaluation, because if you do an so evaluation... That takes, that takes a little time. You're working with them back and forth. And if the person has a budget for that, because sometimes they got a good product, they got a good service, they're just very disorganized. So they come off as being janky. Mm -hmm. So you got to have enough nerves to say the way you're operating is not of excellence. So you said janky. For those who want to <laughs> know what janky means, explain that word. <laughs> it's just not working in excellence. Just disorganized, not following up on calls making the client a nervous wreck because mm -hmm. you're doing things the way it's comfortable for you. You're not taking your client into consideration. Inconsiderate. Why? So if you got a client, if you're not a person that likes picking up the phone, but your client likes one-on-one -on -one conversations and you notice this, you need to pause, have a conversation to say, hey, I work better if we have more organized calls. I don't like, but well, don't say I don't like, but you say, it, uh, it'd be more appropriate that, you know, we can schedule times that we can meet, go over things that I accomplished because a lot of times I'm working and I don't like to pick up. Because if you don't communicate that with your client, they're thinking you're ignoring them. Mm -hmm. They can't get to you. Now, there are such things as high-maintenance clients, right? Yeah, it is a such thing. And then that's when you got to make the decision because there's been times that I did have to give money back. Mm -hmm. Be like for... Really? Uh, oh, Yeah. You, you're in a situation like, hey, I'm not probably the best person to service you. And a lot of times you call them time vampires. Time vampires. Break that down. You right. these words. All right. I, first thing first with a time vampire. Uh, a time vampire is somebody who wants to sit there and talk to you, uh, share all their ideas, and just because you're the expert, want you to validate everything they do. They don't want you to give them the objective criticism. They don't want uh, you to tell you that they want to work. Be a yes, man. They just want you to be like, yes, yes, uh, yes. No. And they want to mm -hmm. sit there on the phone with you all day just so you'd be a yes, ma'am. And for you're free? The they want it for free? And you're the expert. They, they hired you to do oh, a job. Oh, they hired you to be a you yes, man. you know off the okay. bat, okay. this is not going to work. Mm. If you, you can't tell them it's not going to work, they're going to keep going back and forth with you. you anything mm -hmm. that you show them, they're not going to like because... You're not doing what they told you to do. And I used to tell my clients, I will always show them what they asked for. And I would take extra time to show them the right way. But most time vampires was like, and then they tell people, well, I know this is good because Jason, he's an expert in this field. Don't so put I, me out there. Don't <laughs> add me. <laughs> I know. And so that's why you have to make the decision. Like, do I really want to? And they always and they call you. Let me pick your and this is their favorite line. Let me pick your brain for a minute. And they just think they, they got you whenever they need to. And I know, uh, I I think on one episode I told you about the coach I listened to. He did an interview with a high value uh, brand strategist, and he said the way he deal with time vampires, he charged them a monthly rate of four thousand dollars, and Whoa. that monthly rate is so you have fifteen minutes of his time to call him whenever you need to. I like that. And he said, I like that. the reason I like that why, he's, and he was like, do you get a lot of people do that? He's like, no, not really. He said, because the high value people who trust me and my services, I'm not going to waste my time. Mm. They respect what I do. They told me what they want and they expect me to execute. 
Mm. A lot of time vampires are very insecure. That's why they mm. need validations from an expert. And he's like, if they're willing to pay that premium, yeah, I give them 15 minutes of my time. Mm. Whenever they, feel, and he said that's just a day. So if they want to call me, 15 minutes, and he said if you times that by 30, it it equivalents like so many hours, whatever. Uh, and he mm. don't do weekends, so it's like 15 minutes, five. So if you do that's probably like two hours a month, four thousand dollars. Hey, it, it gets it done. Now the last question I'm gonna talk about is uh, internships, mm -hmm. and in this industry, we talk about hiring professionals how to get qualified, how you evaluate them, reputation, five, went through all of those things. Now it's interns. And you hear a lot about people talk about interns is that uh, just get you an intern to do it or get you a college person to do it. You hear that all the time. They always are saying that to us like, Jason, you got a student, a TS, you got somebody. What's your thought on both sides? Interning meaning like should you get interns? Another side of it, should students intern to get their name out there? So both sides. What do you think about the internship approach in this industry? I think anybody looking to get into the game should start out early, even if you're in college. If you were a graphic designer, videographer, photographer, find somebody that you respect in the business or try to find somebody. If you don't know nobody in the business, if you're looking to be an intern, find somebody that's dope and figure out a way. Uh, one of the things, I'm just telling you some stuff I did, uh, write down 10 questions mm -hmm. and go to somebody that you admire and say, hey, can I take you to lunch? Can I take you to dinner? And most of the time they're going to say yeah because they're getting a free meal and they mm -hmm. see somebody young mm -hmm. willing to do this just for information. Absolutely. And that's the cool ones, you know. And ha be prepared because their time is valuable. Don't waste their mm -hmm. time. Right. And ask them questions. Have a pen, piece of paper, or your phone. And just observe the information. Second thing, for those who probably, because I hear the thing, well, you can just go to school, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I always challenge people to do this. If you want, you probably know school not right for you, and your parents probably put some money aside from you. I would suggest that you can go to that same professional and say, hey, for a month or a week, Say you were going to pay $2,000 for a class or $5,000 for a class. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that investment work if you go to a high-level professional that's in the field and say, hey, I got two to 5000 Can I come work with you, follow you around, shadow you for a week, whatever you can, whatever amount of time you can get with that professional for that amount of money? He's taking you to meet clients with him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's showing you how he actually does the work. Mm -hmm. You know that that information is invaluable. And that's that's if somebody that's good if somebody's and really locked in. The greatest thing about it is if he's on a high level, you can say you worked for him. Instant resume. <laughs> Instant top resume. Uh. And who would turn down? You're paying them to work for him. That's how so that it's almost a guarantee. Instead of you just going in saying, "Hey, can I be your instant?" Because a lot of times, like, oh, I. I ain't, you know, I, so a lot of times I want to feel bad for bringing somebody in for free because they mm -hmm. feel that they're not going to work as hard because they're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. Or if a lot of people don't have a budget for paid internship. So it's a boldness. You're saying they have that boldness, it'll get rewarded. Because so a lot of times you don't need that class. You can just go work with that. You got the skills. You just don't know how to break into the business. You just don't know the business aspect. Thing. You can start asking them questions about accounting, 1099s. That's true. You can start asking, and they're going to tell you. Now, hold on. Let me. Uh, last thing with interns is that sometimes I've had young people come here and people try to exploit interns. Yeah. And I've seen it where it's a video guy, young guy, and they, they'll tell him, oh, this going to get you some referrals and we can put your logo on it. Shoot this concert for me. It'll be great. It'll get you people. And that puts a bad taste in folks' mouth. Like they really try to exploit them. And what I've told the young people is like, no, they got to give you something because it's like it's different levels. If you understand how to edit and shoot and you like up here, you should get something. Now, if you down here, like, I mean, you just such a camera yesterday, maybe you should be free. But what do you think about these folks who try to exploit and get over on young talent? Hey, you know what? That's just pay, they call that paying your dues. And I not, knew you was going to say that. And not every <laughs> and not every intern got somebody like you. Mm. And I think it's great that you can guide them in that because they don't know because mm. 
as a professional, you get a dope intern that got skills. And the only thing I got to do is guide mm-hmm. you a little bit and you here for free. Yeah. Oh, it's I, like, like Christmas. They gone. <laughs> I, I remember when I was young and I went in um, hyper, desperate, fresh mm-hmm. off, paying, paying. And I, during this time, I was just paying. I was just happy to be in this professional's arena. Mm-hmm. And you learn from paying your dues. Because I went in, and I was just so happy to get the website. I, I, I totally underbid it. Mm-hmm. And so he gave me a shot. And boy, when I tell you, he worked me to death on that. <laughs> so when it was time for them to update it a few years later, I came in prepared. Mm-hmm. And the first thing he looked at it, and I was nervous too, because I was like, this was like three times more than before, but it was the right price in this time. Mm-hmm. And the first thing he did was looked at it, it was like, oh, you did your homework. He's like, all right, mm-hmm. let's get started. So see, see. hopefully the intern learns, hopefully that you're, it's more people like you that can guide the intern with. So when he ever reached that threshold of his excellence, he's has enough confidence to say, Hey, I did X, Y, Z. I'm at this level. I'm, you know, are you, are you prepared to hire me? If not, I have to charge mm-hmm. or be on my way to my next assignment. And that's, the, I think that's the secret sauce of all of this is knowing what to charge. And I feel like it's so many entrepreneurs in BNI that talk about like their, uh, their mistake when they first got in, a lot of people have underbid it. They didn't shot whole weddings for like a dollar. They mm-hmm. didn't build this. Uh, the uh, construction guy, um, he was talking about not construction, a plumber. What's the plumber's name again? Oh God, what's his name? Rob. What's, Rob. Yes. Take this out. <laughs> Let's say I forgot. But Rob with our plumber, he talks about the first job he did. We underbid it because he was nervous with such the high price, and they worked him. And you hear about that, and I think that this generation is so afraid of that. So they look at all this internet, and I think some stuff you just got to go through your bumps and bruises. So the confidence comes from undercharging. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You have to undercharge, do the work to be like, I ain't going to never do that again. But I feel like they don't do that no more, man. Nobody going to pay their dues no more. Now, here's, here's, a, here's a big thing. First things first, I know you're excited. I know you excited to be on the workforce but make sure you bid for jobs you can handle too oh yeah. so the big question is did you do the homework to know how big that job is because nope. here's the thing <laughs> a person who's on a high level are very good observers mm-hmm. they know what deals to pick that's how they got to the level they are so a lot of times they can see some great talent in mm-hmm. front of them and then when they see that great talent don't know their value and they, they know that person cares about, they have integrity. You can mm. feel that from somebody. I know you looked at somebody, they just mm. confused about how much to charge. I got, so speaking of charge, I got a story I want to tell. There was a student of mine, a um, former student, you know this person. And um, I had to do photography with me. And they was also working at like Office Max, Office Depot or something. And they was paying them $15 an hour. And I was paying them $75 an hour or something. And I was like, I'm overpaying you. And they was like, what do you mean? I said, no, you willing to sell your time for 15 I'm giving you 75 I said, I'll give you 30 or 40 No, you bogus. I said, no, you bogus. I was like, because Great lesson. if you're Great able lesson. to sell time and, you know, it's just plug and play. So if I'm charging 125 over here or 50 over here, why should I go down to 10 And if I, if I do find out you're doing it for 10 I'm going to be a buddy and charge you 20 And you say, well, you getting this over here. You're allowing that time difference. So you have mentors, I feel like, who can look at your time and say, for that, you should be charging this. And you said the wisdom of understanding, like, how long that job take. Biblically, it's called counting the cost. Yeah. Because if you tell somebody, because the money will look good, $20,000, <laughs> 10000 ooh, that's good. But when you look at the scope, you're going to have to hire people, timeline, software, you know, insurance, travel, back and forth. You do the math, $20,000, you made $15 an hour because you ain't do the math. You didn't do the math. And <laughs> <laughs> For I'm real. I'm so, so glad you brought that up because one of my first big jobs, uh, it was illustration and a floor plan. It was sort of like a little architectural thing that we was involved with, doing the mock-ups and stuff. And... I think it was $25,000. Woo! 
And I didn't take in the cost that I had to bring in um, another designer to help me because they had a deadline. But then the whammy was they needed, they wanted a licensed architect to oversee it, and I wasn't licensed. More money. So I never took the time. I just thought to myself, well, he ain't going, he's just overseeing. I just probably give him a couple thousand. That's oh, it. Oh, no, he charging you. So he come in the door. He was like, oh, no. And this is back in the day. We going about 20 years ago. He was like, oh, I'm going to need about seven grand to oversee this. And this is just <laughs> schematics <laughs> and, floor, hey, and space hey, plans. Hey, that wasn't even the blueprints or nothing. How was your face when he said that? I said, oh, for real? So we negotiated. <laughs> so it, he's like, all right, I'll do it for six. Y'all young just getting into the business. I'll do it for six. I was like. I wasn't expect. I was like, but I had to do it. I was like, all right, cool. So the guy I was working with, you know, I had to pay him like, cause all his time and stuff that came up to be like seventy five hundred dollars. So right then and there, I'm thirteen thousand gone. You had to learn, man. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. Oh my goodness. So that's seven thousand dollars. Then you got taxes. You got to pay on that. Then you got expenses because you got to buy. Back then, it wasn't all computers and stuff and software. We, mm-hmm. A lot of that we was doing for hand. And then I didn't have the proper software at the time. And at the time, I had to upgrade to a 3D studio. And if you know back then, that wasn't cheap. Mm-hmm. So that was like twenty five hundred, three grand. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I was left for $4,000 on a three-month job. That's terrible. And it, it, that, that's terrible. <laughs> See, that's paying your due, but you learn. And I think the other part of that is... Um, on the other side, when you have a client who's cheap and high maintenance, or like, cause then when you look at the end of it, they ringing your phone, calling you, this and that. You finally finish the job, and you tally all those phone calls, all those revisions, all of this stuff. I didn't make no money off this. You make no money. And usually those clients would be like. Let's do it again, cause they liked how you treated them, so, and you got to be like you. You got stories like that, and I'm gonna answer this in twofold for you: the <laughs> intern question and the cost. Mm-hmm. From when I was an intern, then I actually had to start paying, and then when business was growing, the only way I can control my clientele was to raise my prices. Now. For a lot of people, especially to the designer, photographer, videographer, once you start on that role of being in demand, Mm -hmm. can't go backwards. Can't go back. Can't go backwards. And one thing I learned through mentorship and coaching, it's okay to refer work to somebody else who's coming up. Yes. Yes, So what I would do is somebody would tell me how much a logo costs. They'd be like, oh, I'm not paying that for a logo. And I'd be like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. They'd be like, well, I talked to such and such, and they said they were going to do a logo for me for 200 My response mm-hmm. usually is, I'd be like, wow, that's a great price. Are they good? They'd be like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're they pretty good. <laughs> so I'd be like this. That'd be great. I'd be like, would you mind giving me that person's number two? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, what you want this number for? I want to hire him. <laughs> See, they were ready good, for that. And he's only charging 200 That means that's a guy who don't know his value for one. Uh-huh. And I can make a lot of money off him because I'm working <laughs> with these clients up here. Yeah. I'm about to put that young brother to work. Yeah. And at some point, he's going to realize he I've been only charging $200. Mm-hmm. So those mm-hmm. people, what the, the matter the point is, I tell them I can refer you to somebody else that can be at your price point. And again, I would like to use that $200 person if they're actually good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you can refer because my price is this because mm-hmm. I have people paying me at that cost. They'd be like, why are you charging so much? And I look at them like, well, if you see my list, you see my catalog, yeah. this is what they're paying me when yeah. I, they pay it. So can't I, go back. Then they'd be like, well, I'm small. Then I'll be like, well, I can refer you to somebody. And I'm not trying to be rude or stuff mm-hmm. like that. But Magic Johnson said there's levels to this. Mm-hmm. He was like, I'm working with billion dollar clients. He said, mm-hmm. I gotta come down and have a yeah. one million dollar conversation. Yeah, and it's, and it's he not said disrespectful. It's, hard. Yeah, it's, not disrespectful. it's not disrespectful. It's yeah. just yeah. the conversations are different. You're mm-hmm. you're you 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 concerned about budget, you you're not seeing the mm-hmm. gains. Mm-hmm. And like I tell people all the time, most people don't look at the end result. Mm-hmm. That's like you ask them, how much are you trying to make? Mm-hmm. If you come and do this advertising campaign, 
how much you trying to make after all expenses? How much you trying to make? Mm-hmm. If they don't, if they can't tell you how much money they're trying to make, or they say, oh, I don't focus on that, or I really didn't think about that. Uh, there's some lessons to be learned about that. Yeah, how can they successfully budget for you? How can you, you successfully budget for me if you don't even know how much you want to make? Is it a mm-hmm. million? Is it 500000 mm-hmm. If those numbers are scaring you, or somebody like me probably won't be your best hire. And you know what? People see that in entertainment all the time. Like, if it's a, if your child is good at sports, you put them in this, get them a coach because you're thinking of the contract. If your child is somebody's doing music, you put money behind them, studio time, outfits, stylists on tour, be trying to get the deal. So people see it in entertainment, but it's on the business side, it's crazy. You because don't really they see don't it like trust that. themselves. See, uh, if, if it's in your business, it's new for you. You don't know what the potential amount is. So I say just mm-hmm. give yourself that's a true. number. That's true. What if you even if it's all right, uh, my business, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars after expenses. Mm-hmm. I want to make fifty thousand after expenses, but the gross I needed to be at two hundred. Mm-hmm. First, ca- tally up all your expenses you have. Most people for that year, the expenses will probably come out to eighty thousand. So you know you at least have to make eighty thousand because you got to cover all your expenses from payroll mm-hmm. to rent, electric, gas. Mm-hmm. If you brick and mortar, uh, server fees. If you're online, at least mm-hmm. get that. And, and I then, think that ROI, making that return investment very, very clear. Yep is a job of a strategist because then if you can show them this will lead to this and understanding there's no definites you know that's another part part too yeah because people i put it i know like in my industry i got nonprofit. the grant writing thing is very it's like that because a grant writer will charge you ten thousand twenty thousand it depends on what the grant is worth but you can still not get the grant and people will be like and i've with grants i've missed a million dollar grant by a couple words <laughs> because it's real. What do you way- mean by that? So, so like that a criteria. Yeah. Well, it was like um, when they read in a grant, you like pages and pages and pages. I refer to someone as like a, a counselor or I didn't call them like an outreach. Special. I called them something else. And that mistake. like That's it- a topic on its own right <laughs> there because so many people try to get grants and don't know. Yeah. All the qualifications. They think, oh, I just get a grant writer. I get this. And they see that. And then something goes wrong. It's no guarantee. Because I wrote two grants that year. One of them got funded. One of them didn't. And they were very similar. And I looked through and it was like the wording I used to describe this thing over here. I used a different over here. And that was the cost. But for grant writers, you know, you're spending all of that money for this one grant I was So do you still have to pay the grant writer? Yes, (laughs) Yes, because <laughs> they spend all of this time getting all wow. of data. So they have to, like, if you're writing a, a grant, right, and you have to get information from teachers, from shareholders, like all of this data, and you put it all together. Now, they're compiling this over a period of weeks, months. Then they submit it, right? They submit this thing. Then it's in review. It takes time. Then you find out if you're funded or not. And some folks get funded, some don't. And you have to pay them. That's why when you talk about ROI, you could potentially get a million dollars or zero. There's no in between. And in the everything we talk about return investment, I can't guarantee anything. That's why people feel that way. And you see that even the grant writer is a hired professional. And as you can see, even with that professionalism, it's still not a guarantee to get funded. And you have to be prepared to still pay that cost. Right, and nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that. So with me, my mentor helps me out with it. So y'all watching this, don't call me. I'm not writing your grant. <laughs> I, I'm not doing that. Don't. I write my own, and that's, that's my least favorite thing to do, but I write it. But for all of those, let me put this over here. But for all of those people who want to get grants and things like that and hire a strategist, you have to get professional help in these industries because what you're finding is that you just rolling the dice by yourself. But if you want a sure bet, a professional can definitely help you get to your desired goal and help you answer and write the right questions. Wow. And I didn't even know. I knew it was detailed because I had a grant in my early years that really helped me fund my business today. And uh, uh, Rashida Muhammad used to wrote the grants, and they were very, very detailed. If it was stuff like that that I found out the value of what I did because I know when probably you was writing your grants, it told you, like, hey, you, ha- you have to put a salary to this teacher. You have to put a salary. Absolutely. For and then you Your budget out. has to be approved. Yep. 
And then you sit there and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize. Because I remember even writing certain contracts I have now, I wanted this. It was like a project I just really wanted. So mm -hmm. to try to guarantee that contract, I, I like, let me just make, they see my skills, this is let me make my fee this lower so it will be no question. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I knew somebody that worked for the company that called me, that was reviewing and said, hey, TS, we really want you to work with us, man, but I can't submit this. I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, everything's there. She was like, man, add another zero to your calls. What are you doing? I was like, well, another zero? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Dude, everybody else's bids is coming in like this. If yours come in like that, you're going to be automatically eliminated. Mm -hmm. and that's that whiz. That one piece saved everything. One piece saved, and it was a job, and that, thank God I got it. But just think if God didn't send that young lady to make that call. Mm -hmm. I, wouldn't know, I wouldn't have known why I didn't get elevated. Yeah. But it was all because I'm thinking, oh, let me, I didn't have enough respect in my value. Mm -hmm. to submit so i just thought if i undercut yeah. that's a cheap move see we ain't know that so we're gonna leave it there thank y'all for tuning in this is probably gonna be like three episodes all yep. together but thank y'all and if you have any more questions or comments please let us know about the content any questions you got hopefully you can take some of this information and it can be a blessing to you share it ts any last departing words no, just make sure you ask the contractor you're hiring the right questions. And like I said, just make sure that's their full-time thing. That's my main thing, making mm -hmm. sure that's their full focus. And I love the part-time people because y'all hustling. Take it <laughs> easy, y'all. <laughs> I'm about to put you on blast.